Right, so I'm going to put a golden pheasant topping tail on this fly here. Um, now, as I showed you for this uh, golden pheasant head, this is actually quite a decent one because if you look at it, everything's in line. Sometimes you get them, they're all twisted, they're all over the place, in which case you'll have to do a bit of work with them. But what a lot of new tyres do is they go and they take one of these curvy things here and stick it on. And it looks like nothing. Because the tail is very important because the tail is going to set the theme for the rest of the fly. The whole of the rest of the fly will be, the shape of it will be determined by the shape of your tail. If you put on a short little tail like this you're going to have to tie a wing in that's that fits it uh, for also for height and also for its curvature and that's going to be a very stumpy sort of a thing. Uh, same, you can use a very long tail as well. Uh, I suppose that's a choice of style but in general I would probably go for a slightly lower uh, a lower set tail uh, and there's a couple of ways of doing that so what you can do is take one of these longer straighter large toppings and use the tip portion of it in which case you probably strip off the most of that and then you'll be tying in this portion here sitting on top, but uh, that's okay, but uh, it tends to be quite sparse at this section and if you try and pull that through to make it shorter what it will start to do is tight trap down fibers as you can see they're starting to kick down here so uh, I guess that's a it just depends what sort of a, a fly you're going for but uh, in general try and look for a topping that's roughly the size of the tail that you want. And a general guide is about one and a half times the gape of your hook. So what I'm going to look for here is one in this sort of section which will have a little bit of curve to it but hopefully is also straight and low enough to suit my purposes. So you take out a, a topping, what you'll find is that there's a little mini plume or mini fluffy thing sitting just in this bit of it. Pull that out. And then measure up for your eye for length. So we're talking one and a half roughly lengths there. Now, what I do is see this little portion here. You can strip that, but if you trim that with sharp scissors, it will leave small little bits of fibers still attached, and that can help you to stabilize your your tail on top. So. or tie and silk here and you can see I tied my tag longer than what I wanted so I'm just going to wrap slightly back onto that with this wax thread and that's going to give me uh, a start point here for tying in our little, little wax bed to tie in my tail on. Now, hackle stocks are not flat and they're not necessarily round either, they're usually oval and the fibers will come off either will come off the side of it. Some cycle stocks then will want to twist whenever you wrap them in. These are usually not too bad, but if you take yourself a little pair of flat nosed sort of craft players and flatten that portion that you want to tie in. Then we'll set that up on top. Tie 
Maybe. No. The topping tie didn't want to break the back of the topping. That allows us to change the shape of the tail while it's in situ. So what you want to do is take a needle and holding your tail backwards, slide the needle along the underside of the ratchet and then at the front here you sort of hump that up. As you can see it has changed, the curve it has made these fibres splay out. And then if I take a wrap backwards, I'm now going to put a wrap over a bit of uh, stock here that had not previously been wrapped. So, you see it lowering my tail. That it hugs the uh, the tag. So splay it out a little bit more, and we give me a much lower tail set. So that whenever I tie my fly, I like an open sort of a tail to top topping anyway. But that will allow me to just. Uh, keep a lower set wing hopefully and then a, a topping over the top. I think it gives it more flow. 